Mitade, mitade, mitade. I work all day and I work all night. Then I come and we want to go home. Now, if you're still listening to this video, I don't know what's wrong with you. Well, you can tell from that, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to playing this cajon. But this is something that I put together for my grandson. And if you'd like to see how to build one, um, follow along in this little video. I noticed cajon designs varied. I chose to put my snares high and my hole low. I also grooved the back and custom fit the back to drop into it very tightly. Now to keep things simple, I simply had all my panels 12 inches across. And you can see right here, I put a blue piece of tape where I would be cutting and routering the back side. And on both sides, I do that. On the tops that are 12 by 12, I put blue tape on three sides that would be routered. Now I don't have a router table, so a long time back I made my own router table with this piece of particle wood. My router is bolted into it, and you can see I have a fence here, a temporary fence, and the blade is just touching the fence. And that means when I pass through, it's going to cut that slot out on all the sides that I have marked. It's only going to cut that width, and then I'm going to have to set it back just a hair and cut it to the exact width. That's what I'm going to plan to do now. Notice for me, because of the way my brain thinks, I don't want to slip and accidentally cut the wrong side. So I have put tape and an arrow pointing to where I'm going to put it against the blade. These are the two side pieces. This is the top and the bottom, and you can see I've labeled it one, two, three. So I know I need to make three cuts here and one cut here and here. This is kind of a Mickey Mouse setup, but I'll rotate around and show you. I have a trash can. I'm turning on the vacuum and hopefully it's going to catch a lot of the debris. Uh, this is a one-time task for me, so even though you can see bridging my table between a couple of pieces of furniture, but we'll go ahead and see how it runs. The worst thing that can happen is I mess up some wood, injure myself, knock my eyeball out, and end my career. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got everything from down nice and tight. So you can see this is the thickness of the wood and then I have locked it in at that spot and now I'm coming in here. I'm hitting the blade there and I'm going to touch it right there. And I'm going to lock it in on that spot. I'm going to square it off a little bit here. Lock it in and of course I'm going to check it and make sure with scrap wood that I'm getting the cut I want. Well, here I am after having cut this joint, routed this out. You can see it's routed in every corner. And then I glued it with this Titebon Ultimate wood glue. It's supposed to be the best, the strongest Titebon it's made. And so this is all glued in this joint. And to kind of give it extra reinforcement, I put these pieces in all four of these corners that are glued and screwed in so that makes it extra tight and then I took and this here is just some lightweight fir wood and I got a snare off of Amazon 
Thinking this was only $8.98. I cut it in half with a wire cutter, each wire one at a time. And you can see I put two screws here and here, here and here. And I have this adjusted such that when I put the front piece on, it will touch it. You can see there's that much, so there's a good touch on there. And then when you tap on it, you can hear these rattling against it. So these, um, I put these in countersank holes all the way around. I'm going to be putting brass coated screws right in the top. And you better watch out because if you're going into plywood, sometimes the screw can travel out one way or the other. So I chose the soft ply to make sure that the screw is going into the soft ply and is surrounded by two hard plies. And remember that old physics law that a moving object will follow the course of least resistance. And for that reason, it's going to stay in that ply and not shoot out. Now going inside here, you can see that I took and I, before I put this in outside of the box, I put a screw and glued it to a second block of wood. And then these two blocks of wood, they're glued and screwed into this piece, but I simply screwed one screw into each side and I pivoted it until I felt I was getting the best sound. And then I put the second screw in with no glue because if I want to adjust it later, all I have to do is loosen one screw, pivot a little bit more, and screw it back in. Now on the other side, you can see here that I put a four inch diameter hole and I've seen people put it at the top and bottom. This will give the base and the treble is up here high. And then I went with a router and I routered all the way around the top. I know some people router this out a great deal, but I just did a half round right here. And I did that half round on both sides and then I did it down the sides here too. And I'm planning to do this. I'm going to paint it. I'm not painted, I'm going to urethane it with some of this verethane urethane. I'm going to put on two coats of it today. But after I get done putting those on, um, the only thing I have remaining is to put the front back on. You might ask, why don't I just urethane it with the front on? And the reason is, is because I understand that you really want that piece of plywood to be able to vibrate. I didn't want the urethane to lock the screws in in any way. So I'm going to put it on when everything is dry and then I'll get that vibration that I want. So you can see I'm coming along pretty well. For me, a, a box is the hardest thing to make with woodworking because there's no margin for error. If you're a little bit off, it looks ugly. Uh, the downside to using plywood like this you get a little bit of flaking off when you're doing your routering. And I was really worried about getting blowout in the corners. So what I did is I took a square piece of wood and I put it right in the corner and clamped it there. And then I routered into that square piece of wood so I wouldn't get any blowout on either side as I was doing that routering. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of coats of urethane on I'll put the front back onto it, and then I'll let you see the finished project. So you're sitting on it, of course, but you can see if you hit it here, get one sound and 